All right, hello. Don't have nearly as much time today, so I wanted to uh, give another shot at uh, uh, going with the uh, the kind of shorter focused uh, uh, video on on a specific topic that I tried to do a couple weeks ago, and uh, had my internet cut out in the middle of it, so I just sort of abandoned that that idea for the original stream. So. I think a slightly different idea for the format this time. I want to kind of do more of an open conversation with the audience. Get you know, since there's lots of uh, newer folks in the in the chat, as well as uh, you know, like look, there's Ben. Hello, Ben. One of kind of the, I think one of the best tutorial makers in the game. So anyway, I wanted to do a little short series of, or a series of short videos on specific topics. I kind of wanted to cover bunkers today. So, I just opened up this quick little uh this quick little file of a course that eh, I was just kind of brainstorming. I don't think anything's going to come of it, but it's just a quick thrown down plot and I can I can create all sorts of quick little holes I want to demonstrate uh some ideas on bunkering. So actually, I'm just going to go, yeah, something like this. Like, here's a decent idea for a golf hole. So we're just going to, we're going to throw a general hole in here. I'm going to use this as a way to demo some bunker stuff. All right. So, a couple, couple basics on bunkers. Um... Yeah, first things first, you generally want to put them in places where it makes sense, where they come into play, where they offer some sort of strategic value. Um, also, you want you generally want, as a rule of thumb, you want your, your hazards to be visible from where the players are hitting their shots. So if there's fairway bunkers, you want to be able to see where they are or at least know where they are. Like you can kind of infer where a bunker is without necessarily actually being able to see sand texture. Uh, so yeah, for appro or for tee shots, you want to be able to see your your bunkers in the landing areas, and for approach shots, you want to be able to see your uh, um, you want to see your hazards from where you're hitting your approach shots. So you know, if this say this is a hard dog leg hole that curved around some trees, you wouldn't be able to see your greenside bunkers off the tee, but you don't need to because you know, in theory, you'd hit it out to the corner, and then you'd be able to see all of the the stuff uh, from you know on the green from your approach shot. And then, but the easiest way to make your stuff visible is generally, I mean, part of it has to do with sight lines and, and making sure the sight lines on your hole make sense. In this case, this one's really easy because uh, your tee shot's basically flat, but y uh, your landing area and your tee are both at kind of local high points. They hit over this low area with the river, so you will easily be able to see all of your landing area. And then because the rest of the hole is uphill, you can see everything on this hole. There's nothing. There's nothing that's blocked. So this is a real easy example of hey, everything on this hole is automatically visible. You can see the whole thing. Simple. All right. And since it's already uphill, that already uh, already kind of eases the uh, the job of um, kind of basic step number two for making uh, making bunkers that present well and are visible. And that is to uh, raise the backs. You know, you generally want them to be facing the player 99% of the time. Um, you know, if if the front's low and the back is high, it's visible. Balls will roll into it easier, and it's harder to get out of them. All of these things are uh, are good to have for for bunkers that you know you want to be strategically interesting. And here. So normally, when I design a hole, I'll put the fairway down first, and then put bunkers in. But a lot of people do it the opposite way. Either way works. But you generally want to think about where your fairway is going and where your hazard's going when you design it. So I put that the the surfaces down first, but I'm usually thinking about where I want the hazards to go when I put the fairway down. So in this case, I just think, hey, I want to put maybe a bunker here and a bunker here. Easy enough. Yeah. Like, since this is just an example hole, I'm not that worried about how it strategically plays. So let's just say, okay, I want to put two bunkers there 
and let's just say I want, like I like this green site. I think I see, I visualize a green sort of like this shape here. Just sitting on that, that ridge, I can emphasize the ridge a little bit, and then I think, yeah, like I would have an apron running into the green, something like this. And then, which lends itself to bunkers, like, like a big one here, um, a big one here. I mean, that's the basics for that. And then I might, just because I think the land, sh uh, land shapes kind of suggest it to me, I'd probably put a smaller one here. That one's not nearly as, like, that one's not going to be as strategically important, but I just kind of like the way it looks, and it will come into play if you, like, bail long right, so. Yep, no worries, Ben. It was great for you to stop in. Although, before you leave, if you have any tips or tricks that you want to pass along to the newbies on bunker construction, we're happy to, happy to get uh, other opinions in this one. And then I would just like throw the fairway in around here, um, make sure it's a reasonable length or width. Yeah, 40 yards. It's a good wide fairway. Anyway, but since I want to put bunkers here, I'd probably route my fairway around it just a little bit. That way, it tucks the the bunkers into the playing area a little bit without me just haphazardly dropping them into the the playing surfaces, which is usually just a very sloppy way to do things. Anyway, we'll just we'll keep sketching out the rest of the hole. I kind of like this as an idea for for this golf hole. I mean, for me, just throwing something down really quick. I actually really like the way this looks. Um, all right. So anyway, I'm not that worried about the the surfaces and stuff. So we're just gonna do those really quick. But it just it helps to have those things as a visual. Uh, for visualizing how you're going to do bunkers, because bunkers don't really exist in a vacuum. They they have to exist alongside all of your other surfaces and interact with them and that sort of stuff. So I could have prepared this in advance, but eh, we don't need to we don't need to overdo the planning for this. It's just supposed to be a uh, free form conversation with the audience. Kind of, kind of half tutorial, half just general. Um, I don't know, group conversation, Q and A, um, discussion on 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 ideas, that sort of stuff. So we don't need to go plan too much into this. Hey, Maddie, how's it going? Yep, we'll just doodle our surfaces in. Again, if this is a real golf hole that I was really interested in, I'd probably take a little bit more care with the splines, but since this is just an example, I can be quick and sloppy with it. It's not an issue. Nah, I don't remember what the width was, but it's fine. I'd usually try to match this up, but okay. So this one's actually going to be pretty easy because you can already see all of the sites where I would want a hazard on this hole. Yeah, maybe I should have picked a slightly more difficult spot so I can kind of show off how you how you make stuff work when it doesn't just fall into places easily, but that's okay. Um, like, if this was perfectly flat, I would want to go... Um, I, I think the... As a general rule, you usually want to elevate your green sites. Um, you know, they play more interestingly. Um, in real life, they would drain better. Um, there's just... There's an endless list of of reasons that like slightly elevated green sites just play significantly better than ones that just sit dead flat on the on the land that they're on. All right, so we're gonna go into. Actually, I'm gonna make a couple different styles of bunkers on this hole just just so I can demonstrate um, some various techniques. Um, so most of the ideas for bunkers will remain the same, but the actual, like a little bit of the technique work will change depending on what style that you're going for. Um, so if I wanted like a really clean, simple bunker, I'll go with kind of one of my usual standard shapes that I design a bunch. Um, you know, you'd have kind of smooth rolling edges and um, here. For me, I always like to draw out my bunker shapes 
before I start sculpting them. One, it's a great way to kind of see how I want it to look without committing to anything. Sometimes if it's a site that's a little difficult, it'll take me a couple attempts to really get a shape that I think fits the landscape and presents well and, and looks nice. So it's just a really quick way to kind of rapid prototype what you want to do before you commit to, to doing any actual sculpting. And then the second thing is once I know where I want the, the, um, the bunker to be, then I do the sculpting first and drop the uh, surface in uh, surface in later. Um, the reason for this is um, here, we're going to do a spline for this one because I think this is a simple enough shape that we can get away with a spline. And I'll talk about a little bit about splines. Um, but anyway, the reason that we uh, the reason that we go ahead and do all of the sculpting first is the game treats bunker surfaces very oddly in this game. Uh, so normally, again, if, if you tell the game that you want to flatten something and give it a zero height, it's just going to, it's going to flatten it at whatever the height the center of the brush is at. So, you know, if you tell the game you want to raise it a foot and you click somewhere, um, sorry, I'm trying to multi, oh, I'm, I, I need spline point, not spline handle. That's what I'm looking for. All right, edit, fill, and sharpen smooth. Easy enough. All right, there we go. So there's our there's our bunker spline. Simple enough. Nice, nice, clean shape. Um, anyway, so the way the game treats bunker surfaces, and I can go demonstrate this quickly, is by default, like, or if with the if you're doing a sculpt brush on a piece of land, um, and you tell it, um, say, I want to raise this area of a foot or a foot three inches, you go and click and it'll make a hole that, you know, it'll make a little bump that's raised uh, a foot three inches. But when you do that to bunker texture, so let's say I want a, you know, I want a flattened brush height zero. So it'll just flatten everything at the, at the height of the center of the brush. But if I do that on the bunker, it's actually sinking that pan down. Like when you tell it, I want um, I want the height to be zero. I, it shouldn't be sinking it based on the numbers it gives you, but but basically you have to add or subtract about a foot six inches. I think that's around where it is um, to the the height of your brush. So if I tell it I want to raise this area like a foot seven, it's basically just flattening it where it is. Actually, it might be a little bit more because rapid clicking is still sinking that, but. Regardless, so due to a lot of the, the general weirdness to it, it's a lot harder to do bunker sculpting once the surfaces are down. So if you do most of it before you put the surfaces down, then all you have to do is kind of little tweaks. Say I wanted to just sink this little middle part of the pan a little bit. And I can raise a foot, just click and drag, and that's the equivalent of sinking it about 8 inches and smoothing it out. So simple enough. <laughs> uh, you're very welcome. All right, so anyway, um, but yeah, I think we're like this bunker is mostly done. However, um, do th there's like a little hill in front of it, and from so from your approach shot, you don't really get to see any of it. So we actually want to do a little bit of movement on this bunker, and this is where I like to use the raise tool because it won't undo any, it won't override any of the sculpting I do. It'll just kind of shift it in general directions. Um, so it'll keep all the local differences, but it, you know, so like say I want to sink this area two feet, it, you know, it won't, it won't flatten the bunker pan out at a different height. It'll just take all of those local values and just kind of lower them by two feet. So in this case, normally a good rule of thumb is you either want to raise the back or lower the front or both if you need it to kind of pop a little bit more. In this case, we'll just do a little of both. I'm going to sink in front of it two feet. Um, like I'm going to sink this hill here just a little bit because that's most of what's blocking our view of it. And then I'm going to raise the back here another couple of feet. So there we go. Here's, so now it's like there's a five foot difference from back to front. That sounds extreme, but you kind of have to exaggerate those, those values a little bit more than you'd think you'd have to, to, to really make it work. You know, I assure you that this bunker will play fine. It's not going to play like something that's, you know, 
it's not going to feel like it's 10 feet tall when you're in there. It'll be a simple shot out of it. All right. So there's just like a really simple spline bunker. All right. Now let's try similar style, but we want it to be a little bit more involved. I'll kind of show off my my usual bunker technique here. So we'll get a little bit again. This this won't be the best looking bunker cuz I don't need to go spend hours getting the the shape right. Although hours is maybe a little bit of an exaggeration. But like okay, let's say we want something a little bit more involved here. Um, and I'll do the same thing. Uh, it needs a little bit of help kind of in presentation, so I'm going to sink that front down a little bit. I'm going to sink it over here as well. Just kind of make it so that I can, I like the way that this looks. There we go. So I ended up sinking it about maybe six feet, but now it went from being almost on the downslope of a hill to being on the upslope of a hill, and it's way more visible, and it plays better. So okay. So here's our bunker spot. I'll go ahead and do the flatten tool again, because we actually do want to override some of like the local differences here. We want to, you know, flatten it. We want it to be more uniform and smooth. So that's where we want this tool. Raise is for, again, when you want to preserve detail, but kind of slightly nudge it in different directions. Like if I like the a green contours and I, but I wanted to just raise the entire green slightly, that's what the raise tool is for. If I don't like my green contours and I want to flatten it out and start over, the flatten tool is good for that. Anyway, so here's how I do most of my bunkers. I don't really like splines. I, they make nice smooth edges and they're good for that. So if you want a really simple kind of smooth, like almost Augusta-esque bunker style, um, splines are great for that. Uh, but if you want something with kind of like... Um, tighter turns, things like that, splines really don't work well for that. So I like to do, I like to take a big circle brush and just click and drag and use that to trace the outline of it. It's a little bit trickier, so, um, and again, you can get different edges based on the size of your brush. So, and, and just, it's, Again, like with like a paintbrush, you're gonna get different marks if you use, you know, a two inch brush versus like, you know, a, a tiny little eighth inch detail brush. There's, you know, the game's gonna respond a little differently to you using different size brushes to do stuff. So there's a little bit of experimentation to this and, you know, personal style and that sort of thing. It, it's a little hard to get cleaner edges with this method, but if you you know with a little practice and a little kind of a deft touch you can you can get stuff that looks just as good a couple of the keys you want to avoid really straight lines as you can see with this one it's kind of always curving one direction or the other the game tends to handle those way better in terms of like if you're using uh, um, uh, brushes L let's see if I did this and I tried to just drag it in a straight line and make a big oval bunker it's it's just gonna have wavy wavy edges and it just looks really off. So the key is for this, you don't want tons of just dead straight lines. You, you it can be really slight curves, but you kind of generally want it to be curving at all times. So there we go. That's how you do something like this. Um, again, just. Still, still like a smooth style bunker, but just a little bit more involved. And, you know, with some hard turns in here to create kind of this little finger into the bunker. Alright, so, and then you can use that same technique. I've been doing this on my recent project to do stuff that's a little bit more rugged. And then I'll go into the really rugged stuff here in a sec. So let's just say here, we're going to go, they're all kind of like general, like U-shaped bunkers. But again, they're just examples, so it's fine. Um, you don't need to go anything too involved in terms of bunker shapes. That's mostly a preference thing. Anyway, I'm just I'm sinking the pan. It's 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 not gonna. You won't really be able to see it right now, but that's fine because it's just a. All right. So if you want to ruggedize the edges a little bit, um, a way I do that. I've been doing that on my my World Cup project is. Instead of making it big and trying to make nice smooth edges, I make the circle brush really small, and I just kind of purposely just am really, really rough with with the uh, drawing the edges. 
you know, just like I'm, I'm not, tr I'm trying to do it quick. I'm trying to purposely be kind of sloppy with how I do the edges. And again, if if there's like little parts of it you don't like, you can tweak, you can tweak the the outside contours of it, that sort of thing. Yeah. And the only thing, the only thing with this, it's probably a touch slower than doing a spline because you just have to go color in the lines and fill it all in manually, but it's not that much slower. So if, if you're going for a different look that you just can't do with splines, this is a good way to do it. All right. So that's kind of your um, kind of semi-rugged bunker look. You, you know, you go from like very clean to still clean, but a little more busy, detailed, however you want to call it, to like sort of rugged and that's three different ways to do that sort of stuff and then to go for like the really rugged like waste bunker-esque uh looks i mean there's a couple i think i had i saw a post recently asking how to do um like there's a lot of types of uh bunkers that really work with this technique that people will ask how to do and it's just uh I don't know. It's it's just a simple technique thing. You'll you'll see bunkers that look like this, you know, in a lot of places on a variety of kind of course styles. So here we go. In this case, we're just we're gonna raise that back, lower the front. Easy enough. Uh, yeah, and look, sink the pan as usual. I don't know. I like this kind of fuzziest brush on the first page, but not like the the really fuzzy brush on on what like page three or whatever. I just find that it gives me a little bit of a harder edge, and it works better for bunker pans, in my opinion. It's not a you know. There's lots of different ways you can do this, and you'll get slightly different looks if you do it in slightly different ways. So. Yeah, you can always experiment. You can always play around with it. Anyway, so um, I don't know. I always called this a little like a uh, gingerbread man or a snowman. Uh, uh, it's more of a gingerbread man bunker shape. So it's this little guy. And I usually will make it relatively small. I'll just kind of and and this. I think you can do this on controller. It's a little bit easier on keyboard and mouse because I can just hold a button to spin it and click. I think it requires a little bit of contortion to do this on a controller, but it's doable. So I just hold the button down so it's always spinning, and then just kind of rapidly spam click it around as I go. And you'll just get all these funky, funky edge shapes. Also, uh, if you don't like the way it looks, just try, um, like, um, you'll get different edges and that sort of stuff based on the size of the brush and how rapidly you're clicking. So sometimes it requires a little bit of playing around with, um, um, I think that's the technique I use to make these bunkers. Yeah. I, I really love the way these look. I don't really like the way this one looks. Like it's, I'll be the first to admit that this one requires a little bit of practice. It's kind of hard to do really well. Um, but, but when you get it right, the results are awesome. So yeah, and then I'll just, we'll just doodle another one in here. Just, these, you can kind of plan them out or you can kind of freestyle them. Uh, I usually like to do at least a little bit of planning so I can at least get the, again, I can get the, the spot where I want my bunker at least generally sculpted in the right direction in order, before I put the bunkers down, because sculpting these after the surfaces are in are even harder than uh, doing kind of the normal ones. And yeah, we can just do the the raise thing to bump that down. Use a flatten tool just to sink that pan a little so that, you know, there's actually some depth in there. And there we go. So there's, there's, you know, again, not, maybe not the greatest looking example, but again, you can get some wild rugged shapes to this. And Bundy, there's a certain, you know, at a certain point, it's if, if you're on PC and you have the option to do mouse and keyboard, um, you know, you can easily switch and switch back. So if, um, 
say if you like if you wanted to do that technique but you still feel more comfortable designing with a controller you can just switch the control method to do bunkers and do it that way and then just design with the controller the rest of the time there's no reason that you can't like just do a technique in the, in a certain uh, in a certain style and then just switch to the other one anyway so we're just going to do a quick a uh, quick play hole here Yeah, so again, all the all the bunkers are laid out fairly well. You can see all of them off the tee. Oh yeah, a couple other like beginner-ish tips that I see a lot of people get get wrong when they start. The game doesn't get funny with the controller when you try to switch back to it. Um, I mean, I've had to switch back and forth a couple times back before they fixed that glitch with um. Um, uh, deleting like OB, uh, uh, um, OB markers and crowds and stuff. Um, but yeah, if you just go into the menu, switch, and then switch back, you know, I, I've never had any real issues with it. Petro, how's it going? Um, all right, so a couple like a couple tips for for bunkers and stuff. One thing I see a lot of people get wrong is scaling. So. I mean, you can make bunkers big, and in fact, like the way I make bunkers, they're usually a little on the large side, but they at least fit the scale of what we're doing here. So I think this is probably on the larger side for a green. Oh yeah, this is a pretty huge green, but for a long hole, it it works. It's, um, you know, this is about as big as you'd realistically want to make a green. So, um, I think a general rule is. You, gen you don't ever want your bunkers to be bigger than your green. You can make them close, and I've definitely made them close on certain holes. Um, but like in this case, none of these bunkers should really be bigger than a small green. In this case, it's like 30 by 20 yards. Um, this one's going to be even smaller. Yeah, it's going to be like 20 by 15. This one will probably be a little bigger. I'm going to guess another 30 by 20. 32 by 15, and yeah, 20, 25. All right. <laughs> yeah, no worries, guys. Um, yeah, and then kind of same with fairway bunkers. These can be a little bit bigger, but you don't want your, um, like at most, like if you have, say, like a 30, 40 yard wide fairway, you probably don't want more than like, you know, 20, 25 yards of bunkers on either side. If 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 there's more bunker than fairway in, in your, like width wise in your view, it starts to look weird and the scaling looks off, so. Um, uh, so what was I going to say? Um, I lost my train of thought, sorry. Yeah, anyway, so scaling is kind of an important thing to keep an eye on. It's really easy to lose your scaling when, when you're starting out, because it's just really hard to get a sense of that scale. I see so many courses where people will put in, like, look, I made a pot bunker, and it's, you know, 50 yards in diameter. Uh, Another thing I'll see a lot of people do is, um, you know, it's like, hey, I want fairway bunkers that come into play, so I'm going to just put them right into the side of my fairway. And everyone loves to use these, like, single shape brushes, and it's just, I mean, they always just look, I don't know, I'm never a fan of, the, like, this style of bunker construction, because it's just, like, it's not very functional, it usually looks bad. And, and then people always just insist on doing this, where they just dig it into the fairway in ways that would never make any sort of sense. So, generally my rule of thumb is that unless you're doing something like a sand belt course, or there's just a very specific reason that your fairway should run into your bunkers, um, I usually just don't bother. It's if if you're smart about how you lay out your bunkers and your fairways, you, you can you can still have like a light rough fringe, and and bring that that bunker texture pretty close to the the edge there, and they will play exactly the same as if you just ran the the fairway into the bunker. They're not going to catch any less the golf balls than normal unless you um, like you're really off, and it gives just a little bit of buffer room for the sculpting to work. 
the way sculpting in this game works is again normally like say with a sand belt course if you, you, you hey the, the um, hallmark of that style is bunkers cut directly into the edges of the green and there's just this sharp edge there so you go from flat bunk or flat green surface to like you know straight into the the, the uh, pan of the bunker but you really can't do any kind of sculpting with hard edges in this game because just the way it does mesh textures, it, so it means your whole green is just going to roll into your bunker, or, or your fairway is going to roll into your bunker. It makes sculpting really hard. So if you're really careful and really good about it, you can get like a close proximity to a, a sand belt bunker, but you're never going to get it just right. And if you're not like experienced with, with that sort of stuff, it's generally not worth attempting. Ooh, also, I just realized... Uh, Centerline bunkers. Well, we're talking about this sort of stuff. Um, let's go... We're going to clear this out. Or unfill it. There we go. Because this is just how I tend to do... Uh, actually, no, no, no. Hold on. Let's undo that. Because... So, another thing a lot of people will tend to do, it's like, I want a centerline bunker. And so they just take, I made a fairway, and I put my bunker here. It just... It usually looks terrible when you do that. Either... Either they just throw a shape down and it just auto-generates this tiny little bit of, like, this tiny fringe of light rough. Or they do it with a spline, because splines will do this. And, again, on there's a couple there's a couple places where this is a great trick to have. Um, um, but if you do it with splines, it'll cut directly into the fairway texture. And a lot of people will do that, too. And again, and this just generally sucks for the same reason, is that it's impossible to get the sculpting, uh, the sculpting, uh, you know, decently effective on, on that spot. I, there are exceptions to that rule. I've seen a couple people pull it off, but it's just generally exceedingly difficult, and it functionally doesn't really matter. So, I think a a better way to present your your interior fairway bunkers is let's go unfill that again I will usually um, unfill it um, here in this case we're just gonna do a little simple shape here um, let's just do like a u-shape bunker that's a good easy one again not not the cleanest bunker but whatever it's just an example and then just because I'm gonna go raise that back up. We want it to kind of present in a, in a reasonable way. We're going to raise that back up and lower the front down because that's, again, stuff will roll into it. You'll see it. It's just a better bunker that way. Well, anyway, so that now I'll go, I'll take a fairway spline and I'll just trace around this. I'm just kind of guesstimating how much space I need to leave, but the good news, like, just, just keep a Try to keep an approximate uh, kind of equidistant uh, space around your, your your bunkers. Like that's a good estimation. And if you're a little off in, whoops, I don't want to fill it. I want to close this one. There we go. And I can do sharp and smooth as well, just to smooth it out. So if I wanted more of a like a rough fringe there, I can just as a little bit of an edit like or a fine tune you can adjust the width of this the spline if you want to tweak how much surface you want to leave around it all right so there we go that's kind of a nice decently looking um fringe around it and also so again if i want balls to roll into this i'll just uh fill all this in with light rough there we go so you know it it looks better. Um, it gives a little bit of room for um, for sculpting to kind of work there. Sorry, I, I'm get. I need to catch up with chat. Um, Nightmares of De Devon Quarry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you did that sort of bunker um, uh, on that one. I I mean, you did those about as well as you can, but it's still just a nightmare to do. Yep, and yeah, it's the yeah people think that you need to cut your hazards just straight into it in order for it to come into play, but if you're smart about the way you're sculpting it, 
like again, you know, in terms of like say these bunkers, they don't, you know, they don't cut into any of the surfaces. They have, they have a fair amount of play to them, but they 100% come into play because anything that's not fairway slopes into it. Things are still going to bounce in there. You can still fly it in there. It's, you know, you don't. You don't need to cut your bunkers straight into all of your playing surfaces for them to be functional. If anything, they're you know they, in a lot of ways, they're almost less functional. Um, Oh, thanks, Eric. Um, and yeah, what Razor and, and Eric said, like, there are 100% exceptions to this. It's just, um, like, again, it's the, like, with with almost every rule of golf ar architecture is there's there's plenty of cases where you can break it and it makes sense to break it. But, again, it's just generally it's the... It, it, you want to know the rule and understand why it's there so that you can understand when you can break it and it makes sense. So there's lots of real life courses where it's like, oh, the fairways roll right into the bunkers. And you can do that, but it's, again, you want it to make sense. So it's like I could make fairway splines kind of run into there and run into here. Like, you know, it, it's I can take work and, you know, like make the fairway cut into these bunkers in ways that make sense but but you know so it's like if you do something like that we generally have like a suggestion of for courses being submitted to the database where hey your splines generally shouldn't like cross over each other and um, uh, you know the surfaces shouldn't really directly interact with each other We'll just do that really quickly. To, oh, that's right. These are shapes, not splines, so it's not going to connect in like that. Okay, so if I was going to do this, I would have to draw the bottom lips of these with splines so it would, the, the surfaces would connect. But regardless, like that's a way you could kind of do it. And it makes sense, and it doesn't look awful. But, you know, 90% of the time when people do that, it's they just do it, you know, the, the normal... Uh, Dang it, what am I looking for? Surfaces, here we go. They just they just do it like this, like, hey, I want a bunker here, and they just do it like that. And it looks terrible, and it looks sloppy. <laughs> glad, glad you liked the VOD. Yeah, and what Matt, yeah. What 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 you know, what Kenyon and Maddie said is is perfect, you know, it's the yeah. You can 100% break rules. It's just understanding why that rule exists and and you know, understanding what the purpose is for it. Is there anything else that that I that chat thinks I need to cover on this one, or should we call this an episode? I think I covered most of the basics here. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah for this this um this uh, uh fairway. Um, People have, I know, people have figured out a way to kind of do these and be able to fill it. I think you basically have to take the spline and something along the lines of like you trace along the outside, like you trace a spline like this. Oh, I can't remember what it is. Or no, no, oh yeah, you have to kind of trace it like like this or something like that, and then connect it all up. And then when you fill it, it'll work. But I've just I don't think that's actually any easier, in my opinion, than, um, um, here, we'll get rid of that one. I usually just, I'll doodle the outlines of my surfaces, and then I just take the, the fairway brush, and I just kind of color in the lines like I do with my bunkers. Again, this, I, this might be one of those type of things that's just easier to do with a mouse and keyboard than it is with a controller, but, again, I, that's just how I generally handle, uh, fairways with uh, internal bunkers in them, or centerline bunkers. But there's plenty of different ways that you can do it. Yeah, again, the only thing about doing it this way is that you have to be careful to make sure that you hit everything and you don't leave little, um, like, here, I'll do something like that. Like, you can accidentally leave little spots of rough that kind of ruin the way that your fairway plays. It just look a little sloppy.
and yeah what what adam said it's like i think i think there are if if you if you get the i i don't know if i've run into any on my course but i've definitely seen spots where if you like if you're a little sloppy and you leave holes like this you can end up with a spot that the game plays like heavy rough but it doesn't render any there but really if you're just if you're just careful about um, making sure that there's a little bit of crossover when you're when you're outlining your stuff and it's going to cover all of those gaps when you're when you're drawing it in I've, I've never had that happen on any of my courses so as long as you're not like really really quick and, and, and reckless with your uh, um, essentially doing your coloring book uh, doodle in the lines uh, uh, fairway construction method you should be just fine Oh, and you're saying it happened to you on a fairway that you splined. I've never. Wow, I didn't know that could happen with splines. But okay, guess it can. I guess it can happen with either method. Yeah, I'm with you. I like doing that. All right. Well, unless unless chat has anything else that they want to add, I think I covered all the basics and most of the kind of general techniques. Um, and again, there are other ways that you can make bunkers. Um, this is just this is just kind of the way I make bunkers. Um, there's there's a wide variety of even if you like using this uh, this method, like you can you can use different brushes, you can use different styles, you can get you can get different looks and different edges and stuff with all sorts of different uh, uh, different methods. So. Um, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, if you're trying to get a look and you're not quite sure how to, how to get it, just kind of play around with it. See, see what happens when you use different brushes or use, uh, you know, you know, just do stuff in different ways. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 actually, I know that's a joke, but, uh, uh just, yeah, as another tip for, for designers is, like, you can use stock shapes, just you don't want to abuse stock shapes you know where you're where you're using them it tends to be like yeah if you want to make a little small circular pot bunker um the circle brush is a great way to do that you can use stock shapes for that it's fine or you know or like you know like kind of the more simpler ones you can get away with a little easier but if i see like there's there's ones that are very obvious that it just you know, but if like if I just see bunkering on a course that just is like nonstop like this, like look, I'm making bunkers. Like if I just see all these just big sloppy, obvious single stock shapes thrown everywhere, it's just really boring and it it, it doesn't usually make sense and. <laughs> make stock shapes by using other shapes. Yeah, absolutely. I you know, like um. You know, like, a lot of these are stock shapes for a reason, you know, type thing. Where it's like, chances are, if you draw a bunch of bunkers with, with however you do it, you're going to come up with some bunkers that look like this one. Or, oh, this one. This is a, this is one where it's like, oh, I have definitely made bunkers that look like this. So it's like, even if you end up with something similar to stock shapes, it's not that much of an issue. It's just that when you just rely on exact stock shapes, um... Yeah, yeah, exactly, what Eric said. It's, can you get a tutorial on church pew bunkers? I mean, honestly, I've never really made church pew bunkers on any of my courses. I'm not really sure, um, like, anything specific I'd suggest for that. Other than, I mean, the same kind of general rules of uh, bunker sculpting apply. It's just a really fancy shape. I'd still generally make sure that, you know, I mean, they're essentially just a big fancy bunker, so you'd still want, like, the whole area that it covers to to kind of generally slope from front back to front, so you can kind of see all of them, or you just have an elevated tee shot, something like that. All right, um... I think I yeah I think that's about all the like the major rookie stuff that I've you know or or technique stuff. Plus we're at forty five minutes. That's probably a long enough for for a video like this. So I think we'll uh, we'll cut it here and and see how this goes.
did you show good splinage? Uh, yeah, I did. I did spline one of the bunkers. This this one's splined. This one's circle brush, and then this one's like really jagged, you know, circle brush. Oh, I'm gonna keep streaming. I'm just gonna cut the episode here and then just jump into a little bit of random streaming for a bit. So sorry, sorry, Reeve, you didn't scare anyone away. But anyway, um, if if you guys like this uh, format, um, I might try to do a couple other videos on on other topics just to see how it goes. But as kind of a little experiment, and uh, um, I, I figured bunkers is the one that I should start with. I get lots of questions on bunkers, and uh, and I tend to be I think that's one of my kind of specialties as a designer. So. Hopefully it answers most of the general questions I'll usually get on, on Bunker stuff, and um, um, yeah. Anyway, thank you everybody for joining me. It was great having all of you guys. And for those of you in chat, I'll be, I'll be back in a sec, but for those of you uh, watching this video on playback, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Until then, have a good one.